In this tutorial, we'll be looking at the basic editor functions of your website. So let's go ahead and edit the About Us page. So we're logged in as editor, and we are going to click the Edit tab. As you can see, an overlay comes up, and here is what is called a What You See Is What You Get editor, WYSIWYG. And it functions much like a word processor. You'll see a lot of these icons you'll be used to, and they're very intuitive in what they do. We'll go through them real quick. You've got bold, italic, underlined, strike through, left justify, center justify, and align right, full justification. These are for forming a bulleted list and a numbered list. Indent and outdent here. If undo, we've got hyperlink, how to create a hyperlink here. And if once you create a hyperlink to unlink it, we've got anchors, images, font color, superscript, and subscript. Here's a block quote. View the source of the document. Horizontal lines, pasting from plain text, pasting from Word. And here's a way to show your blocks. Remove format, characters, special characters, paragraph formats, tables, spell checking, and our media icon. So we'll go through what those do now. So to make the text bold or italic or underline, you highlight the specific text you want to change, selecting with my mouse and just selecting the bold icon. You can see when I click off there and click somewhere on that field again, it will show me that it is bold selection is highlighted in addition to showing it right in the editor that this text is bold. So you can apply multiple styles to it. So we've got this one bold, strike through, underline, you can do all of them at once and then you get a, a mess of unreadable text. To remove all formats, and this is very handy if you paste in content from another source, from another web page or from Word, you can clean up and remove all the styles by clicking the erase, remove format icon. And you can see it gets us back to where we were. Let's go back, let's get that back though and do this a different way. Because this whole string is selected with this style, I can click anywhere in this string and you can see it highlights all these options. By clicking the option again, strike through, it removes the strike through from the whole string. Moving the underline, removing the italic, and we're removing the bold. Let's get the bold back by doing the undo. Now, if we just want to remove the bold from part of this, we highlight what we want to remove the bold from and click the bold icon. And you can see then it preserves the rest of the bold area. For formatting here, you can see by default, everything is left aligned. So you don't need to use the left align icon. If you highlight an area and click left align, it'll highlight that it is all left aligned, but it won't make any change to the browser. So it's best to leave that as the default and let the overall style sheet cover that. If we want a center area though, you can highlight it and click the center icon. And once again, you could do right justified or full justification if that is your desire. So very easy and to remove it, you just select it again. Bulleted lists are, allows you to get paragraphs and turn them into a list of items. So here I've just typed in one, two, three, and I'm pressing enter in between. And by pressing the, the enter key or the return key, it puts a paragraph in there. So that's why there's that extra space in there. If you only want one space, you use the shift enter, and then that will give you one space. And we can do that quick example right here, of putting some text right there and that is how that works. But let's get back to the list. So I've made this list and it's paragraphs. So I can click one of these icons. I can click the bulleted list and it turns into a nice bulleted format. And we can go back over to the number list and change it to a number list. To remove it, once again, it works just like the other functions. Click it again and it's gone. You can make bullet lists of larger paragraphs right here. So very handy feature and that depending on how your content is used that can come in real handy. Now let's say you want to indent this one paragraph for some reason. 
we've got a nice feature to do that. You can see it indents it right to um, as the whole paragraph gets indented when you select that option. To remove it, you click the outdent icon. So very easy, indent, outdent. And then you can do multiple indents to get it exactly where you want it. So let's go back and put that back the way it was. Hyperlinking. Now this is something you'll be doing a lot on your website. So to hyperlink, you just create, you just similar like the other functions, you highlight an area and then click the hyperlink button. Now there's a couple different ways to make links. Now if you're going to link to another target or another location on your own website, you can start typing the name of the page and you'll see it'll pop up contact. I select that with a mouse and it builds a link for us. This is a, the best way to add a link to your site. It ensures that if you change the name of that page or, or move where that page is, it will still, that link will work. So it's a great way to add links is by using this link type called Drupal. Now, if you want to link to another website, you should select URL. And this way you can put in, let's say, a link to Google. So HTTP, you know, you can just type in google.com. There's some other functionality here. We can change the target, and the target will allow us to make it go into a new window. That's the most common one you'll use. If you're, you, if you're linking to an external website, it's a, it's a good form to have it open in a new window so your website stays open beneath it. So we'll make this open in a new window. You can see once we once we hit save, it adds that link there. I can hover over it and see the underline, and that's my style. Your style may look different. It may be underlined, it may be a different color. To remove the link, we can click anywhere in here and click the remove link icon, or we can actually go back in there, select anywhere in there, click the link icon and edit that link again. So very easy to use that. Images can be added. If you want to, you'll use this image icon if you're going to link to an external image that is that you have a URL for. So this is not going to be the usual case of you adding images to your document. We'll use this media icon over here, which gives us access to our media library. So you can see you can upload a file, an image, right from this form. It tells you the supported file types that you can support here. Or we can browse our library of existing pictures. So we've got these two pictures already loaded. So I'm going to select one of these. And you can put a description in, uh, in here. And that's a good good form for SEO is you add a description to your image and also increases accessibility of your site so those with screen readers can actually know what your picture is and you can change the format which is the size of the photo now you may have different formats selected here and you can actually create your own formats for image sizes and we'll talk about that in another screencast so we'll just select a large and click the submit icon. You can see it adds it right to the content. So right where we are. Once it's in there, we can click on it and I can move it. You have to look carefully and you'll see the cursor is beneath the transparency of the image. And I can very carefully position that exactly where I want it. And we could do some formatting of the style of that at a later time. Now with font colors, Let's, let's do some things here. We're going to make a heading section here. I'm going to highlight it and change this to a text color, select a color here. So we're going to make it red so it stands out very clearly. Now that's, now you can take that and, you know, make it bold if you wanted to, but I'm going to actually make it, I want to do some more stuff with this. I want to make it a, a real heading. And that's where these formats come in handy over here. We've got paragraph formats. And you can see heading one, heading two, heading three. These are predefined styles that we can use to identify headings. You can see once I select it, it's, the font size is there. It has, as a part of the heading tag, it actually has the spacing above it and below it predefined. So that can be changed on the global style sheet. 
one caveat about the headings is if you wanted to make this area heading, if I, I'm thinking, oh yeah, I want to make that heading right in line, but because this is a part of a paragraph, if I select the heading three, like we did before, the whole paragraph will be highlighted. So we'd have to go back to remove the heading. We'd turn it back to normal and we would have to actually turn that into its own little paragraph. And now, because it's it's in this paragraph, like you can tell, it's normal, we can now select heading three. So that's a little quirk that you have to, you'll understand as you start using it more. Now, by default, paragraphs have this spacing beneath it. By changing these, now if I can highlight these, and these are both normal paragraphs, I can change the paragraph type to a normal div tag. And what that does is it collapses a space. And then the space can then be controlled, once again, by your style sheet. And this definition of the style sheet has that spacing, you know, no spacing in between the paragraphs. So we can leave that or we can highlight it again and turn it back into a normal paragraph. Now that brings up the block format where we can show our blocks. And we click on this icon right here and you'll see it'll show us all the different blocks we have of, of our paragraphs. So we've got the heading, it shows H3 tag right here. Our paragraph here, H3 again, paragraph, paragraph, and here's our div tags. So these are different. So we can actually, in this mode, we can clearly see how our document looks and change that to a paragraph. And then you can see we've got our paragraphs. Let's change these to a bulleted list. And you can see then it removes that from the the block display. So that's very handy if you're trying to figure out how, if something doesn't look right on your page, it'll help you identify it by showing the blocks. Now, of course, you've got full access to the source code of your document, your HTML code, by clicking this icon. And you can get access to it. It's readable mostly. And as you spend more time working with HTML, it's, it's, it's fairly easy to start understanding what the tags do and how it works. So hopefully you don't have to go in there too often, but it is an option that gives you that ability. Horizontal lines are very handy and they can be added to a document. I just click, I clicked right here at the end of this line where I wanted the, the horizontal line to appear beneath. You can see it has spacing built in it on the top and bottom and it acts as a paragraph. There's also a way to enter special characters. You just click the icon and you can select registered trademark, you know, registered copyright and some international characters right from this screen. And this is the preferred way to do it. And this will ensure that the correct HTML code gets put in there so it works for all browsers. So it's important if you have a special character to insert it through this tool. Tables are for making columns of data and we'll look at that in detail in a later episode. Spell checking, this is Latin text, so the spell checking functionality will show everything as being a wrong word. You can click it through this, through this interface and use the spell checker, or I prefer to use it through the enable scat, which is enables checking on the fly. You can see the underlines of all the words that are incorrect. And we right click on the word and you can select right away the correct spelling. So we'll make that congruent. Very handy and very fast. Once you're done, save your changes and your page will be published. And there you are. Thanks for watching our tutorial of basic editing.